Hey, welcome back to Clean Cut, where we can talk about the truth about just about anything, as long as we use logic and common sense. This season we're talking about Mary, the mother of Jesus. And last time we established that Mary is the mother of Jesus, and because Jesus is God, she's also the mother of God. This time, is it correct to call her the Blessed Mother? Some people have difficulty referring to Mary as the Blessed Mother, so today we'll look at some Bible passages that are related to this title of Mary to see if and how strongly it's supported in Scripture. And it came to pass that when Elizabeth heard the salutation of Mary, the infant leaped in her womb, and Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Ghost, and she cried out with a loud voice, and said, Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb. Luke 1, 41-42 Still, just because Elizabeth thought Mary should be called blessed doesn't mean it's true, so... And Mary said, My soul doth magnify the Lord, and my spirit hath rejoiced in God my Savior, because he hath regarded the humility of his handmaid. For behold, from henceforth all generations shall call me blessed. Luke 1, 46-48 Okay, so Mary made a prediction that all generations would call her blessed, but is there any supernatural support for the use of this title? And the angel, being come in, said unto her, Hail, Hail full, full of, of grace, grace. The, Lord the Lord is with thee. Blessed, blessed art thou, thou among women. women. Luke one twenty eight. Okay, fine. Man, this was an easy episode to do. We've got some time left, so let's look at one more aspect of Mary's blessedness before we go. There's one point in the Bible where Jesus offers blessings to people based on how they act. How blessed is Mary according to the Beatitudes? Well, the first two Beatitudes bless the poor in spirit and the meek. This means those who aren't proud. Mary is definitely not proud, as we saw in Luke 1, 46-48. God regarded the humility of his handmaid. What humility? And Mary said, Behold, the handmaid of the Lord. Be it done to me according to thy word. And the angel departed from her. Luke one thirty eight. The next beatitude blesses they that mourn, and Mary certainly did that when she was present at the bloody execution of her only son. When Jesus therefore had seen his mother and the disciples standing whom he loved, he saith to his mother, Woman, behold thy son. John 19.26 Next, the Beatitudes bless those who hunger and thirst for justice. He hath put down the mighty from their seat, and hath exalted the humble. He hath filled the hungry with good things, and the rich he hath sent empty away. Luke 1, 52-53 Here Mary praises God for bringing about justice for the mighty, the humble, the hungry, and the rich. So she's also blessed in this way as well. The fifth and seventh Beatitudes bless the merciful and peacemakers. And the wine failing, the mother of Jesus saith to him, They have no wine. And Jesus saith to her, Woman, what is that to me and to thee? My hour is not yet come. His mother saith to the waiters, Whatsoever he shall say to you, do ye. John 2, 3-5 Mary shows mercy on the guests at the wedding, even knowing that it will expose her son's miraculous abilities. She acts to make peace by resolving this tense situation, and, at the same time, setting Jesus on the path to his ministry, which would later lead to the cross, despite his initial objections. The sixth beatitude blesses the clean of heart, in short, those with clean and holy thoughts. Behold, thou shalt conceive in thy womb, and shalt bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Jesus. And Mary said to the angel, How shall this be done? Because I know not man. Luke 1, 31 and 34. How did these verses show that Mary was clean of heart? Because she was committed to holy celibacy. She says at the end here that she knows not man. This doesn't mean that she literally doesn't know any men, but that she hasn't had sex with any men. So she was a virgin. Still, it could just be that she hadn't had sex yet. After all, she was married to Joseph, right? However, she also asks the angel how she could possibly have a child. Now, if she were planning on ever having sex with a man, this question wouldn't even need to be asked. 
since the angel could just say, well, well, well in a few, in few weeks, weeks you're going to have, have sex with your husband, husband and, and boom, boom, boom baby. baby. Why even ask a silly question like that? It only makes sense for Mary to even ask this question if she were devoted to remaining a virgin or had taken some kind of vow to that effect. Only clean-hearted people make that kind of lifelong decision, especially when someone of the opposite sex has clearly shown a desire to marry them. So Mary was clean of heart. Finally, the last two Beatitudes refer to those who suffer persecutions for the sake of justice and are reviled, persecuted, and spoken against by others for the sake of Jesus. And these things clearly happened to Mary as well, not only when she watched the crucifixion of her son, but also... And after they were departed, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared in sleep to Joseph, saying, Arise, and take, and take the, the child, child and, his and his mother and fly, and fly into Egypt, Egypt, and be and there until I shall tell thee. thee. For it will come to pass that Herod will seek the child to destroy him. Matthew 2, 13 So, even from the relatively little that Mary appears in the Gospels, we already know that she's blessed. According to all of the Beatitudes, Elizabeth, herself, and the angel Gabriel, speaking for God himself. That's darn good authority right there. Next time, is Mary perpetually virgin? That's all for now, so keep asking questions, and thanks for watching.